In this episode, I'm gonna talk with Eric Cole. Eric's a licensed professional engineer and electrical engineer at Stanley Consultants. Eric just passed the PE exam in 2022, and he's not only gonna give us some strategies and actions that he used, but he's gonna tell us how remaining active in the community and going to events while he was studying actually helped him to prepare better. This episode is brought to you by PPI Kaplan, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and the passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. All right, now I'm excited to welcome our guest on to the show for today. Eric Cole is a electrical engineer. Of course, he has his professional engineering license. He's with Stanley Consultants. Eric, welcome to pass the PE exam. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Eric Cole. And as Anthony said, I work for Stanley Consultants. I've been there about five years now. And I'm a power distribution engineer out of the Muscatine office here in Muscatine, Iowa. I do a lot of projects for... Um, cooperatives and rural electric power co-ops. They uh, don't necessarily have an engineer on staff all the time, so they hire Stanley to design and build line and do anything that they might need for uh, projects. We also work on bigger projects for larger um, investor-owned utilities, such as MidAmerican Energy. Uh, we do a lot of projects with the city of Lansing, Michigan as well. So we get a little bit of everything. We're a pretty good-sized company. And we get a little bit of exposure to small and big projects. Yeah, no, Stanley is a, a great firm. We do some work with Stanley, some leadership development work, and they are very interested in investing in their people and helping their people grow. So we're 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 excited to have Eric here with us. And Eric, talk a little bit about your your background in electrical engineering from Iowa State and how that prepared you for taking the PE exam. Yeah, I think college is a good foundational knowledge. So you learn a lot about the terms that we use in electrical engineering. You learn a lot of the basics. You learn maybe what your program actually is doing behind the scenes, but you don't necessarily use that every day at work. You, mm -hmm. you just learn how to learn essentially at college. And I think that's really important because you're going to spend your whole life with challenges that you don't know how to fix necessarily and aren't necessarily going to be taught to you by somebody else. So I think Iowa State prepares me a lot of ways for the engineering world, how to think, how to how to go through problems. And for the PE in particular, uh, I mean, the PE is very similar to college, right? It's an exam. So I spent four years taking exams at Iowa State. So that's really helpful. It teaches you how to study, how to, how to know when you know something. So for me, that means doing a lot of practice problems. I can't really understand a concept just listening to somebody. I have to do it myself. So I think yeah. that was something that I learned at Iowa State that really helped me on the PE too. Yeah, that's great. And I think one big takeaway from what Eric said there is, and I know it, this doesn't happen for everybody, but I think the sooner you can take the PE exam from when you've graduated from undergraduate school or master's, whatever you, whatever your level of education is, it just makes it easier just because even though you know, you, you're going to have to study and prepare for the PE exam, and we'll get into that in a few minutes, like Eric said, it's just the process of, you know, learning every day and reading, you know, getting into the concepts of things and getting, having quizzes and exams, right? Keeps your mind very sharp when it comes to taking an exam. So if you're someone who is considering the PE exam or you're preparing for the PE exam and you're, you know, a few years removed from school, you're on the right track, you know, stay with it. Even if you don't pass the first time and we hope that you will do it again right? Don't get it away too far away from school because it becomes a little bit more challenging. And, and that being said, you know, you work in the power delivery market, Eric, what were some of the challenges that you faced while trying to study for the PE exam and working with a job like that? 
Yeah, I'd say that the power delivery market helped me in some ways because I took the power engineering exam. So you would think that that would cover most of the same topics, and it does slightly, but there were definitely some things in there that were a challenge because I don't ever work with them. Like, I think there was some engineering economics in there and like control systems and stuff like this that I don't deal with on a day to day. And so a lot of those kinds of things were a bit of a challenge because I don't I don't see those in my day to day job. So I kind of had to refresh on all of that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's another good point is that there are different PE exam options you can take, right? You could take one in different fields, of course, for the, for the, uh, for the afternoon session. So you want to think about which is best for you. Now in some States, I will say, you know, what exam you take, you know, has to be more aligned to what you're doing your day-to-day job. But in some States, it doesn't matter. Like in my case in New York, I did mostly stormwater, but I took the transportation a civil portion just because for everything I read about, I thought I would do a little bit better on those types of problems. So I think the process of selecting the one that's best for you may be dictated by your location, but maybe not. You may have more options in terms of which which exam you can take. And so, Eric, what were some of the most helpful resources or study materials that you used while you were preparing for the exam? Yeah, I'd say by and large, the the most helpful is the practice exam that's provided by, well, you can purchase it, I guess, from the NCES website. And that was very useful because you actually got to see problems that you might see on exam. There were very similar type of processes, ways to think that you needed to know in order to do well on the exam. And then I thought that it was really critical to actually spend some time with the notes that they provide. So my exam was the online version. The benefit of that is you can take it whenever you want. The downside of that is you don't get any of your own notes. So you have to show up to the exam knowing the notes that are provided. And that takes a considerable amount of time to learn because while somebody else wrote them, you don't really know them. They might have a different way of explaining a constant than you're used to. So I think it's a really good idea to spend some time with the notes that you are provided and then practice exam problems. I also bought a book online that had some that kind of went through just problems that I could look at to get familiar with the material. Yeah, that's great. And that's a very important point. Right now, the PE exam is CBT or computer-based. Eric took the computer-based version last year in 2022. And I don't know. I mean, I took it a long time ago, so it wasn't computer-based. And I feel like that's something that would make me a little bit nervous, honestly. I liked having some of my own books and my own notes. So I do definitely agree that you know spending some time with those materials that are provided and really getting to know them is a very important aspect of this exam process. And I think you should really definitely dedicate a lot of time to that. Um, I think that how well you know that material is definitely not just going to dictate how well you do on the exam, but the time that it will take you to do the problems. And to me, that's always been the biggest challenge with the PE exam or the FE exam, quite frankly, is the timing. I mean, you might be the best engineer out there. You might know all your equations, but If you don't know where to find something, if something takes you seven or eight minutes instead of five minutes on a problem, those extra minutes will add up over the course of an eight-hour exam. And so you need to really be on top of things in terms of moving quickly through the exam, quickly, but still obviously paying attention to the details of these problems. So Eric, one thing we always like to talk to people about is their study schedule, their routines leading up to the exam. You know, Talk a little bit about your schedule and how you were able to balance work, your personal life, PE exam preparation. Talk to us about your routines. Yeah, I found it helpful to kind of plan out when I was going to take the exam. So three months ahead of time, four months ahead of time, that kind of time frame, mm-hmm. I was looking at nailing down a date that I would want to take it on. And at that point, I was... So I'm married and I have other extracurricular activities that I do and whatnot. So for me, it was, I need to set aside a time once a week and just say, Hey, this is my study night. So I, I don't know what day I picked, but I had a day for about three months that I would spend a couple hours going through problems and practice exam stuff and just looking at all that. And that worked really well for me because it was, Hey, it was winter time in Iowa. So that was helpful. (laughs) I, I kind of planned for that so that it wasn't so easy to be distracted by other things. It's a little, there's a little more free time for me in the, in the winter time anyway. And then, um, the weekend before I, I blocked that off so that I could go through most of the actual practice exam 
So I kind of did that at the beginning and then did some other problems for a long while and then actually just retook the exam all at once, get a feel for, hey, it didn't take, I didn't take eight hours, but I took maybe like four or five hours to go through them all. And I got a little bit of a feel for what it's going to be like to sit that long and try to focus on one thing for <laughs> eight hours long. It's a, it's a long test. So that was good for me. Yeah. And, and I think a couple of important points there is that what Eric said about scheduling the exam on certain date is, is I think a really good strategy, right? You'd rather be probably studying over the winter months than studying over the summer months, right? So you definitely want to think about, you know, setting yourself up for success in studying. I know I did the same thing I, I, and it was a while ago, but I'm pretty sure I studied through the winter when I didn't want to be outside, you know, it was cold and I wasn't really interested in that. And <clears throat> so that's definitely a big plus because that can help you stay focused because it just, it just lends itself to uh, better habits. Um, the other thing that I would say as well is, you know, I agree hundred percent as you get closer to the exam, you want to do more problems and put yourself in more test-like atmospheres, right? I think if you're sitting on your couch studying or you're sitting in your kitchen table and there's people in the house running around, it's not really the same atmosphere as the exam. And you want to put yourself in a timed atmosphere. Like I said earlier, time is the biggest factor. So if you sit down in your in a quiet room at a desk and you have a timer and you have only the materials you're going to have in the exam and then you go through one of those exam problems, to me, that's the best thing you can do because you're kind of training yourself to get in the mode of the exam. So when you show up that day, you're going to be able to execute because you're used to those conditions. And I find that to be something that a lot of people don't do because I know it's hard to get like eight hours at a time or even five hours at a time. So you really have to plan accordingly on a weekend like Eric mentioned, leading up to the exam. So you have that block of time to do that. Now, Eric, I just want to go back to what you said about the scheduling. So did you kind of mostly study that one night of the week for whatever it was, three or four months leading up to the exam? And then you kind of increased the amount of hours you studied as you got closer to the exam? Yeah, I would say that was generally my flow. And I would kind of go through so the book that I had had different sections on different parts. And so when I initially took the practice exam, I noticed like, okay, I got most of the ones about economics wrong. So maybe I need to spend a little more time actually going through that and figuring out what the equations mean in the, um, in the given sheet and then how to like solve some of these problems. So it was kind of a, a combination of looking at the ones that I didn't really know and maybe focusing a little bit more on that. And then, yeah, as I got closer to the exam, I definitely spent a little more time. And I mean, even even that schedule time got a little more towards the towards the end. OK. Yeah. And I asked that question just because one of the questions I always get is, you know, how long should I study? And I think generally speaking, it really depends upon the individual. Obviously, everyone has different needs when it comes to studying and retaining information and how you best learn some people that we talk to will, you know, prefer to study a little bit every day. Some people prefer to have a longer session one time a week or a couple times a week, like maybe like Eric said. So I think it really depends on your learning preferences and how you retain information. Some people I've talked to <clears throat> will, um, you know, do some of the, you know, the quantitative or the, or sorry, the qualitative reading of, of sections of a book during the week. And then on the weekends, they'll do some problems. Again, you have to try to come up with your own um, you know, your own process that works for you, but I wouldn't necessarily be married to like, I need to study this many hours to pass this exam. I think it's very much dependent on you and how you learn. Um, and that's something that you should consider. And, and listen, if you get into the studying and you're just like, Hey, this isn't working for me, obviously make some changes, right? Make some adjustments. But I would say for sure that you're going to probably want to prepare, you know, anywhere from, four to six months ahead of the exam, depending on what your comfort level is with, you know, studying and preparation. I know some people that say, Hey, two or three months was really good for me. I, you know, I did a lot of stuff in two or three minutes. Some people say, Hey, I took six months and really planned it out and spread it out my time a little bit. So think about your time, your situation. I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer to it, but I would encourage you to get going on it earlier rather than later. So you can make some adjustments along the way. So Eric, you're involved in community activities as well, like Toastmasters, like Math Counts. How did some of these experiences help you in your preparation for the PE exam? I would say that being involved in the community and doing other things really helps you budget your time a little bit better. And I think that once you become more involved, you 
realize that, you know, spending a couple hours uh, once a week on the exam may take a little more devotion and you're more willing to actually study during those hours. If you have a bunch of free time and you're like, oh, I'll study later. Hmm. That's a, uh, that's a common habit that I know that I've struggled with before. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I'm free all week, so I'll just move it to Friday. And then Friday comes and you never do it. So I think it, if you have your schedule a little bit fuller, sometimes that's helpful for me, at least. And it's like, I know I have to do it or I'm not going to find time. Yeah, I feel like that's a very, very, you know, interesting and important kind of productivity hack or point, if you will, because it's like sometimes when we're busier, we're more focused, right? In fact, I was having a conversation recently with someone about their college experience because my daughter's like looking at colleges now. We're talking to different people. And this woman happened to play sports while also getting, you know, a major that was a pretty uh, pretty rigorous program. And I asked her about that. I said, how are you able to play sports and go through this program? And she said, well, honestly, I think it was better because I had a lot more structure and I knew I had to get things done on a certain amount of time. And I only had certain windows to do my work. So that's actually a, a really important point because I'm sure most of you that are studying for the PE exam are working as engineers, right? So you have very limited time and you may have families um, and you might have a lot of other community activities going on. So I would encourage you to number one, plan out your calendar months in advance, like Eric mentioned, maybe picking a night, one night a week or however you end up doing it. But then I would also encourage you once a week to look at your calendar and make sure that you plan out your week accordingly. You know, things might happen one week and maybe a work meeting, you know, came into your day you're supposed to study and make adjustments. I think that time management in your PE exam preparation is super critical. Um, but I do like the idea of the fact that we're busy in general as engineers is probably going to help you because it's going to really force you to commit to certain times during the week to get your studying done. So, Eric, I'm sure some of our viewers here are just starting out preparing for the exam, maybe just decided to take it, or maybe they're even deciding whether or not to take it. What would you, what message would you have for those that are just have just decided I'm going to tackle this exam? Yeah, I'd say, A, if you made it through college, you have an engineering degree, you've already passed the FE, like you've proven that you can pass the PE. You just know that you need to work at it, right? you're smart enough, you can put in the time and you'll pass the PE. That's what I would say to them. And, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. If you decide you want to do it, you probably need to commit to studying it for it and whatever you need to do to make your motivation do that. Like for me, signing up to take the exam and, you know, you have to pay a fee to take the exam. You have to pay for books. You have to, like, you're investing right. not only your time, but you're investing some money into it. So like that, that was a motivation for me as well. Just, knowing that, hey, this is something that I want to go after and you're going to have to decide to do it, I guess is kind of my advice. <laughs> yeah. And I think one other point that I'll add to that, that I think is really, is really important is, you know, committing to it early on. And what I mean by that is, you know, Eric mentioned some commitments, like, you know, you're, you're spending money, right? You're being, you're literally investing in it. So that's definitely going to commit you to it and hold you accountable. But also, I remember for me, one of the things that I did that was really helpful is when I decided to take the exam, I told my boss about it. I said, hey, I'm taking the PE exam. I'm taking it on this day and I'm taking off from work that day. Um, I actually sent him an email about it. And for me, that was really like an accountability factor, right? Because I didn't want to let him down knowing that I'm studying, knowing that I'm taking a day off of work. Um, and, and so if you can commit to a few people that you're close to, they can kind of serve to help hold you accountable in your studying efforts. Because like Eric said, it's not an easy process. I mean, I think a lot of things in your career that are worth doing are, aren't easy, right? And that's why there aren't so many licensed professional engineers, right? That's why it's a, it's a real great distinction. So, so some good tips there in terms of starting off and committing to it. So Eric, last thing, now that you've passed the PE exam, what are your future career aspirations and how do you see the engineering license kind of helping you in achieving some of these goals? Yeah, I think the goal of being licensed is to use your license, right? So as a consultant, obviously it's very valuable to us because we sell engineering work. And according to the law, we have to have licensed engineers sign off on that engineering work. And as part of that, you get a you get to see your project actually get built you get to see your work actually be done and while it can be a little bit intimidating because you know now it's your responsibility right. and your name's on it <laughs> i think that's rewarding in a lot of ways because it's like okay 
I I chose to do this. And I'm telling somebody that, hey, I looked at this in depth. I studied for this my whole life. Like I know what I'm doing and this is what I think is going to be the best solution to your to your problem or whatever you're doing. And I think that that's a good thing. And one of the like things that I'm looking forward to is actually using my PE just to do projects and to, yeah, I guess build that professional portfolio, that kind of stuff. So That's great. I mean, listen, there aren't a lot of professions where you get to design something and see something being built, you know, as part of the community, having a positive impact on society. And the PE exam is really the facilitator to that for many engineers, for you to be able, like you said, to put your name on it and to really be able to get behind something, which I think is great. Another thing I'll add to that is for a lot of you out there, once you get your license, you will likely have more career opportunities available to you within your organization, right? I mean, a lot of consulting firms, even public organizations or agencies, there are different levels that you can rise to. And it will depend whether or not you have a license and how high you can maybe go in an organization. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. I know sometimes we don't think about one or the other, but I guess what we're both getting at here is there are just a lot of benefits to getting your engineering license. And I know it can be tough to go through the process and it could take a good six months of your life. And you know it's kind of like you're back in school for those six months with a whole bunch of other things you still have to do. But if you can plug through it, if you can have a good strategy, a good plan like Eric did, and stick to it, it can really be a game changer for you in your career. So with that, I just want to say, Eric, I thank you so much for spending some time with us. I know how busy you are with your job and everything you're doing, but I really think that what you've shared here is going to help a lot of engineers. So thank you for taking the time. All right. Thank you too. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Pass the PE Exam. Please be sure to leave your comments and questions below this video. We will answer them in an upcoming video. We want to help you succeed and answer your specific questions. And please be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can get videos from us to help you pass your PE exam on a regular basis. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE Exam.